Okay, uh, I'm on my way out to um, look around the Blue Mountains. Uh, it's been the first time for a year since uh, I've fully committed to uh, filming the documentary uh, track, the Yowie documentary, with Attila Coldy and uh, Duo. And um, so now that it's finished, I've got some time, some time to um, get up there and have a look around. Um, I've been restricted because of the, um, the fires that are up in the Blue Mountains around the uh, Naranek, Cedar Creek, Ruin Castle, Three Sisters. So there's probably a lot of trails that are blocked off. So we're just gonna go up and see what's open and what we can walk around in and we'll just go from there. But as you can see, we can't see the Blue Mountains at all. You usually can see the Blue Mountains while you're driving in, but um, there's so much smoke around, you can't see, you know, half a kilometre away. So anyway, we'll see what happens when we get up there. As you know, Sydney's off, like, full of smoke. So is most of New South Wales. There's fires everywhere. Anyway, we'll go up and see what happens. Okay, we're pretty close to the Blue Mountains. You should be able to see the Blue Mountains from here quite easily, but you cannot see it at all. So, it shows you how much smoke is around. So we're virtually a couple of kilometers before you start going up the first part of the Blue Mountains, and uh, you hit Glenbrook. Yeah, we'll film that just before we get there. It's not, we're not far away now. You basically go over the, the uh, Nepean River, and then, straight up the Blue Mountains up to Glenbrook and then we'll keep driving in. It might be around Hazelbrook or something. I'm not quite sure. I'm just going to see what trails I see as we're driving along and just choose one and go for a bit of a hike. I'm just going to go for a look around today, but a little bit. There we go. We can just see the Blue Mountains now through the haze. So you've got to get quite close before you can actually see the uh, Blue Mountains appear in the haze. So, anyway, we're nearly there. All right, I've got this little um, microscope here. I bought it off online, it was about $50. So, it goes up to a thousand times, and you just move it and you can get really right up close to things and you can hook it to your phone so you can actually see what of it's seeing on the on your phone I'll just make it so it's a bit clearer so that's actually looking from the micro um, from the microscope but what it does good is you can actually I'll film it here get right up to something and then record it really close as you can see I've got the microscope over the fly and everything that it films you can put on your phone and you can get it really close so where you can see the hairs on the actual so yeah and we're going to Fairy Falls, Dante's Glen Walk and Empire Pass. Never been here before, so let's see what we find. See on these marks, just at the start of the trail here. And um, looks like kangaroo, maybe possum as well. You can see the, uh, the track as it leads off. So it could be a big possum. Walking around here. Some more wildlife here. The Rosella. Let's see if I can get him before he uh, takes off again. 
No, not a real hard trail this one, at the moment anyway. Well, well signed, so we started at North Lawson Park and we might just go down here at Fairy Falls. It seems like a bit of a waterfall and then come back up and then go back down there. Like any time when you go hiking or researching, just keep a lookout for the snakes. It's the uh, summertime and they're at their most active, as we already all know. And uh, yeah, just take a bit of a uh, bit of caution while out hiking in the bush, especially when it's uh, the conditions are really hot and the sun's out. The snakes like it the most when it's hot. Uh, a nice little waterfall. And if you're hot, you can just step up here, watch out for the moss and um, have a shower. I wonder if the uh, yowies or may have come up here at one stage. It's pretty close to houses and people would come up here. All the young people around the area might come up here and to get away from things. But I can't see much of any litter, but it is where they've had a fire right here. Charcoal left over. Some marks here where some sort of animals come through. There's a dog. You get your native. I don't know if this is like a tree stump or it's part of the moss or some sort of... I've never seen it before. If anyone can tell me what it is, please comment below. It's like the moss has covered something or... and it's growing around it. Just a bit of advice, if you want to take a selfie at rock ledges, just make sure you don't get too close to the edge and you don't tread on this moss. doesn't matter what colour it is, the red, green, it's all very slippery. People have died at places like near Empress Falls, taking selfies, going through the barriers where it says not to because of this dangerous and uh, falling down the waterfall and 30 metres to the death. It's not worth it. The overhang goes more into here, along there. I haven't got my gaiters on, I wouldn't be walking in this here because of the snakes, but it might be a place for me to look in the future and uh, go and have a look and see, because no one would be going there. There's no trails leading in there, it's just thick bush and then it looks like it's a bit dark in here like it could lead into a little cave or a little cavern and uh, you can see how it's really smoky I go on these little hikes to, to check out the new trails and see what they're like for future research so it's basically what I'm doing here today 
So you've seen this trail's nice and flat for most of it. Be good for a nighttime research just to walk along. But I'll be waiting for it to be a little bit cooler. You know, April, May, June or something like that. And when there's no fires about, because you never know when fires are going to turn around and head in, in a different direction because of the wind. The fire is pretty much at the uh, peril of the wind, it just whatever the way the wind's going, that's the way the fire goes. Uh, just recently, someone on uh, Facebook kind of uh, said a few bad remarks about me. Um, I was just uh, helping out a fellow researcher, and there was a GoFundMe page set up, not by myself, but I just posted it in a few groups. And if the person who um, ran the group didn't want that, um, they could have just said no. But nearly everyone said yes because they didn't know this person or heard of her. Um, she basically lost a van that she lived in and um, it was just set up to buy another van to, for her to basically live in. She doesn't live in a house, she travels around in the van and she's a very nice person and I didn't deserve the comments by one particular researcher up the, up the mid north coast saying things like oh, I'm a drug smoker and all that kind of stuff. You know, different communities help out their own. So I was just helping out and trying to, you know, see if people could, you know, put a bit of money in. Um, you know, no one was forced or anything like that. Um, just to see if the Yowie community, <coughs> community could help out one of their own. Um, I don't think I deserve to get rubbished like that. So this particular person, um, you know, he can go get stuff for a long care. Okay. And uh, I heard another researcher's had a big rant about me. Heard it went, goes on for about 20 minutes. Uh, I haven't watched any of it, I'm not wasting my time, but um, yeah, he can rant and rave and cry all he wants. Doesn't bother me. You know, you, you get yourself out on social media, you know, not everyone's going to follow you like the Pied Piper. You know, so if someone doesn't like your research and comments about it, it's just tough. Get over it. Like most places in Australia at the moment, the bush is extremely dry and there's so much down here that could, you know, burn at any moment. Or some stupid idiot come along and light it up. And, uh, or a storm could come through in lightning. But let's just hope uh, nothing burns here and they put the fires out at Katoomba real soon. This, uh, Tree's done very well, not to uh, fall over. It's done its, its best to stay up. Just hope it doesn't fall over while going underneath it or anyone else. So you can be like a Superman picture of holding it up. <laughs> Must have got blown over in the wind and it just bent like that. Weird. There's a little hidey hole for a possum. So at night time he'd come out and that'd be his house during the daytime. Or sometimes you get parrots, you dig them out and uh, have their young inside them. Right, we've uh, reached Echo Bluff. So it's probably about a 15, 20 minute walk from the waterfall to here. It's not hard at all. So if you're not really that fit, you can still walk out here. Just do it on a cool day. The cool breeze is actually making it feel colder than uh, what it would be in the uh, western suburbs like Penrith and Blacktown areas. So this is Echo Bluff. I thought it might be a bit of a look out here, but it's 
probably got to walk a bit down here. There's like a lookout down there. Might go and have a look down there. I don't think much or any people would be going down in those valleys there. That would be a good spot to set up some gear if you can get down there. I'm going to have a look and see how I can get down there. and Because uh, there's no trails around here that lead down there. We're going to have to bush bash it. I'm going to have a go down here and have a look see and see what I can find. Just going to check out underneath this rocky outcrop here. There's probably a lot of people been around here before. I'll see what I can find. It's not much to look at really. It's pretty low, it's not, you can't stand up in there at all. It'll come down one day when it like gets worn away. It's gonna go down here and see what I can find. Yeah, this looks like a okay cape point here. Watch yourself here, there's pine needles on the ground and they're always slippery so if you come to places like this just make sure of your footing because these things you just they put them easy. Alright. You can see how smoky it is. might be a new area for me to look into for research but I want to get down there it's just to get down there and get back up to put some um, sound recorders down you know if I come down, down here by myself and you get hurt and you know you're in a lot of trouble you could probably climb your way down these rocks here I'd have to find a easier way to get in. It's pretty steep here. It'll take you half the day to get down and then have a half to get back up. I haven't seen any signs up along the trail that gives me any indication there's any yowies up there. Um, it's really dry, but any time there's a fire, you know, they're going to use the gullies, they're going to use the waterways to get in and out of places. So that's where you want to be, that's where you're going to get the uh, your results, but at the moment with the amount of fires out, it's just just coming out to find places for the future when everything settles down and you know when it's winter time and come out of here and you get a lot more things happening and the results are much better in the winter time. That's what I've found, it's my personal view, it's not everyone's view, but even though a lot of sightings are you know in spring and summer, 